according to nature, again, there are 10 to the 19th grains of sand on planet Earth. You could take every grain of sand on this planet and assign it 1 trillion internet IP addresses with IPv6. So you get the capacity that we're building. What does that mean? It means that using things like Bluetooth, RFID, near field communication and the like, we are going to be connecting every physical object on our planet to the internet one way or the other. That means pets, plates, prisoners, children, forks, toasters, televisions, cars, pacemakers, airplanes, coffee cups, everything will have an IP address and be online. And so that will bring, you know, tremendous conveniences one way or the other. You can have the cool smart TV. You can walk into the house and the smartphone will know you're there and it'll turn the house to the right temperature. You can control, you know, the, your uh, temperature in your home with the Nest over your iPhone and do cool things like that. The right music will play. It'll draw the bath for you. When you run out of milk, it'll reorder it and Amazon drone will come and bring it to your house. So that's the very lovely picture of the Internet of Things. But my concern about it is, is that there's a lot more things that we need to protect once you connect this many more devices. Cisco has estimated by the year 2020, we will connect 50 billion new devices to the net. And Intel computer company is more aggressive. They say by 2020, we'll have 200 billion new devices on the net. We can't even protect the laptops and servers and smartphones that we have online today. So for me, the Internet of Things is just going to be the Internet of Things to hack. It's just more targets for people to go after, much of which will be automated. And I can go into lots of examples of things that already have been hacked that you wouldn't expect. Baby cameras. Uh, there's a large number of wearable devices in America that are yep. connected, right? Absolutely. So we tend to think of, this is where people, again, we think we're in a technological pinnacle. We're just starting. Yep. I always think of Mad Men. If you watch the versions of Mad Men, they're yeah. 1964 and, uh, and they get a new computer for the yes. office yes. or the color TV and they're like, oh, technology, it's changing our lives. I know. And they have the same conversations we right. have. And so it just always seems to be a perspective. In one episode, thing. didn't the guy go and attack the computer? Like one guy went yeah, crazy so. on the show yeah. because the computer are coming. Yeah. So yeah, I, I get that to some extent, right? That they thought they were at a technological pinnacle. And then you would, you know, I remember the first time I got a cassette recorder, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Or the first digital watch. So we've all been through this, right? We used to have, then we have remote controls uh, and it's just constantly changing. So some of the things that will be going online, of course, are hackable. You mentioned baby monitors and future crimes. There's a lot of stories in there. I think that would be of interest to parents, but I tell the story of one family in Ohio that three o'clock in the morning, they're fast asleep and all of a sudden the mom and dad hear a man's voice in their house and he's screaming and he's screaming their baby's name Jessica Jessica I'm gonna kill you you bitch the parents are like what the hell is going on there's a man in their house they go running into their daughter's bedroom and the baby cam that's sitting there all of a sudden turns and focuses on the dad they freak out they pull the plug turns out that the baby cam was hacked. The daughter's name, the infant daughter's name, Jessica, was painted over the crib so they could see that. And some crazy guy just broke in and started yelling at their kids. So the cameras that we think might protect us can actually be used against us. I tell a story of the Crown Casino in Melbourne, Australia. Big casino. Somebody pulled basically an Ocean's Eleven. They hacked the cameras, the security cameras of the casino. They sent their guy in, a whale, a big fish. He played poker for 24 hours and walked away with $33.5 million. How did he do it? They hacked the cameras. He had an earpiece. His comrades could see the cards that the dealers were holding, and they just told them how to bet based upon the dealer's hand. It's not just cameras, of course. We've had refrigerators that are hacked that have become part of botnets. Uh, there's an interesting story that you may be aware of now with the Samsung televisions. I'm not sure if you heard about this. No, I don't think so. So here in the UK, uh, Samsung's created smart TVs. All, all manufacturers have smart TVs connect to the internet. But previously, you had to control your smart television with a remote control. Talk about Mad Men days, right? Mm -hmm. for, for modern people, like a remote control is way too much work because you have to push a button. You could accidentally burn a billionth of a calorie so Samsung had to fix that I say jokingly the way they fix that was to make their televisions voice interactive so your TV's constantly listening you can say TV on TV off channel 7 volume up volume down and your TV will respond 
But in order for that to work, Samsung had to update their terms of service and condition. And they said, uh, just be aware that anything you say to our television, we're recording and we're processing it. We're sending it out to a third party and they're you know, helping us control your TV. And then they ended their terms of service with a note. Warning, if there's anything sensitive that you wish to discuss in your own home, please don't say it in front of the television because we're listening. So now your TV comes with terms of service of so you and your wife or boyfriend are lying in bed and now you've got this terms of service like, oh, the TV's listening, watch us, right? It's like 1984, right, is, is coming to life. So, but there are other devices that people don't recognize as computers that absolutely are. Take the modern automobile. Over 200 chips in a car today. They control everything from the radio to the horn to the windshield wipers to the airbags and the ABS brakes. And most cars are online today one way or another through certain emergency transmission protocols and things like that, OnStar and the like. There are ways to get into these uh, type of uh, cars. And so hackers have targeted them successfully. About three, four weeks ago, there was a 60 Minutes episode where Leslie Stahl is driving down the street and remotely hackers turn on her windshield wipers. Then they honk the horn. Then they tell her, okay, stop by those orange cones there. And she says, okay. And now she's pounding on the brakes and she can't stop the car. A car is just a computer that we ride in. An airplane is a computer that we fly in. An elevator is a computer that we walk into. And pacemakers are computers that we put into our body. And going back to what we discussed earlier, all computers are hackable even these. So when we talk about the cyber threat, the bit that I think most folks don't get is when they think of cyber crime, they think, oh, identity theft, my credit card hacked, all that. My point is that that's just the beginning. Everything in our physical world will be hackable. Every device, a toaster will have software and firmware in it, right? Your blender will as well, as will your diabetic pump or the wearables that you were mentioning, your Fitbit, all of those will be wearing computers. There are pills now that you can take which are ingestible computers, right? That will measure various blood uh, and, and all different types of um, measurements in your body, right? Mm. So for- and transmit in real time. Transmit in real time via Bluetooth back to your phone. That's all hackable. So there are pills that release how much medicine should be let out based upon them monitoring the acids in your stomach and seeing how much of that medicine that you are digesting. That's a computer. It talks via Bluetooth. It's hackable. Right? My friend Bertolt Meyer, I mentioned him in the book, great kid uh, from Switzerland. He was born without a left arm. He has one of the most advanced bionic arms and bionic hands in the world. And one day he was visiting me in Silicon Valley. I said, Bertolt, tell me, how do you control your hand? Like, what if you need to fix something? He says, oh, no problem. I have an iPhone app that controls my arm. I said, well, how does it talk? He says, Bluetooth. I said, oh, that's cool. I said, can I see your phone? He says, sure. He hands me his phone. I start pushing buttons and his hand starts going like this. Of course, I didn't need his phone because he uses Bluetooth. I could have just hacked into the Bluetooth. There was no password on it. And now I'm in control of his body part. So the human body is even going online, which means that we as people are now and will be much more in the future through wearables, embeddables, ingestibles, and the like, subject to cyber attacks ourselves.